Sixers hoping they could get that ninth straight win not to be took all the way to double overtime so we welcome you here to Sixers post game live brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance Amy Fidel the coach Jim Lynham and the big man Mark Jackson with you and listen we thought it was gonna be the first one to 100 took until the second overtime for the Sixers to get there but Joel Embiid fouling out really the difference maker in a game like this Jim he fouled out with about four minutes to go in the second OT. Yeah I think you would have to say uh, hindsight aim that was the play of the game uh, but James Harden with that drive in a two point game Derek Jones the Archbishop Carroll product mm -hmm. made a sensational block shot. We know he's a great leaper but that was a great defensive play. Yeah, this game really was marked by a lot of sloppiness obviously some bad shots and, and good defense if you want to look at it from at least a positive aspect. But Mark what can the Sixers take away as now they hit the road for four more. You know they let one slip away. I mean yeah. you know this team. This team Chicago Bulls play exceptionally well but the game was there for hours for the taking. You know we start off the game sloppy. Uh, then when Joe after Joel fouled out we kind of fought, couldn't find our mark. I just think you know it was, it was we wasn't clicking on all cylinders today and Chicago took full advantage of that because they weren't playing necessarily great themselves. Yeah I mean Chicago certainly fighting for that play in tournament now they have now won five of their last six so they're doing everything they can. Of course the Sixers uh, trying to climb further up They're right now in the second spot in the East. Well this one did go to double overtime and that is our Colonial Nissan game changer. When you get to the extra extra session I will say Jim Lanham called both extra periods. <laughs> It's uh, it's a little problematic that you can't close a team out when you have the opportunities and then you have something like this Joel Embiid fouling out. Yeah Both and again give uh, Levin some credit here you know he just drove right at Joe you know to in induce that foul uh, and then as a result Maxi came to the forefront and did all he could. Uh, you know try to rescue the Sixers. You mentioned it Mark you know, sloppy play um, not a great night for some of the we saw D'Anthony Melton step forward Tyrese Maxey but James Harden certainly struggled. He did he did he you know unusually uh, you so know, unusually so and he's allowed to do that uh, when we got other players like Maxey and, and Joel could pick up the slack along with Tobias but unfortunately you know a little too late you know there's a few plays we had like DeRozan had an opportunity here he look at this look yeah, at no this Joel that is LMP. what he does. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? One, one thing that have been that wouldn't have been such a high level shot if Joel Embiid had got switched off on him. But unfortunately, it's Paul Reed instead of Joel. Mm -hmm. He took advantage of that. And then uh, there's a block right there. That's what you were talking about, Jim, with uh, um, Jones yeah. getting the block there. And, and then, a great hustle by Melna. Yeah, I have no idea what uh, Levine thought. Allah said it accurately. What what did he think that the guy vanished after falling to the floor? But a lot of hustle on Melton's part. This is the great yeah, block right here. This is the right Derek here. Jones block. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With the left hand. Local product yeah. going all the way up. He really is a high riser because he climbed all the levels. Tobias got a very up. makeable look off yep. that block shot. Uh, you can see, right? Wow. That's Woo. well done. Right and here, Tobias. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a good dribble in. Uh, you know, obviously it was down and uh, did not go all the way through, and then they get the rebound, yeah. and that was all sure. That's a tough one because it would have been a really nice win to get, given what they had to overcome, the mistakes that they made early on, Joel Embiid fouling out, getting all the way to double overtime, but it was not to be. But we mentioned kind of the the scheduling kind of glitch. This is the only home game. You have three on the road. You came back for this one, and now you have four more on the road. It's it's a uh, Kind of an unkind thing, but it was fun to, to be here to celebrate the 83 team. We will give you Doc, uh, Dr. J's speech that he made at halftime uh, coming up. But you know, this is one of those that it felt like they were maybe still on the road in the beginning of this game, Mark. <laughs> the way they played, the, the way the game, uh, for the first five minutes, they were shooting 21% in the first mm. five minutes. They just got it up to 42 overall in general. But early in the game, it was just a lot of missed shot, missed shot. And that was both both teams, yeah. baby. Both teams struggled early trying to find their legs and trying to find a rhythm of the game. But the Sixers never really got it going until maybe Melton, I'm going to say, sparked that, uh, um, had that spark to start it. Yeah, he did. Melton, uh, D'Anthony Melton played tremendous. You saw him really, I think, come alive, especially uh, with those triples late in this game. When you have an, a, a game like this, it's kind of like a stop and a start and just kind of really disjointed, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. Jim, what can you take away from it? Yeah it's tough to establish a rhythm Amy. Uh, disjointed is a good word choppy it was uh, what was in my head mm. till I heard you say that uh, and what happens number one you're missing a lot of shots number two there's a lot of turnovers so you can't get like a flow to your play and these players you know normally especially in today's NBA they like to go up and down what well, we were into the second overtime before anybody hit the hundred point mm -hmm. mark. Uh, the Sixers had uh, what 40 points at the half that's 15 17 points below their normal halftime average so this uh, yes the defense was certainly a factor 
but uh, just choppy play overall usually leads to that kind of a result. We talked about how it was an off night for James Harden. He did not play in that final game of the road trip. He did return for this one. And it just uh, assist-wise, certainly uh, uh, on par with what we've seen from him. He's the NBA's assist leader. But I know he's going to talk about those five turnovers. Those are going to come back to haunt him. 0 for 6 from 3. You can see it only five points, two field goals. He is the subject of our Yingling Presents Lager Up. Mark Jackson, is this a little bit of rust? Is this just a little bit something defensively that the, the Bulls are doing? Combination of both? No, this it was a lot of soft error. You see that turnover? He had one late in the game also going into overtime. You know, he just he lost the ball a lot tonight. Uh, maybe his rhythm was there. It was just one of those nights he couldn't get a good a grasp on the ball. But that happened to him quite frequently tonight. How frustrating is it a player when you have a night like this? When the game is there for the taking, you just can't get over the hump and you're having you know, an off night. You know, it's frustrating because you, you don't expect it because you're playing amongst the elite of the elite. Uh, but when it does happen, it kind of throws you off. But you understand this is one game of many, and you have to build back and bounce back uh, better than that. You know, one thing that James Harden has been known for besides his assist is getting to the free throw line. He draws a lot of fouls. He only drew one foul. He made that one free throw. But, Jim, that's also an unusual stat when you see that for him. Very much so. But what it probably indicates to some degree, Aim, the other team said we're not going to put him on the foul line. So it's challenging his shot. Uh, when he drives at you, you know, move your feet and simply do not commit because Harden is one of the best at that. But uh, when you go from a guy getting, let's say, eight, nine, ten free throws and he shoots one, you have to give some credit to the other team. Does that kind of compound the frustration for him then, Mark, because he's not getting to the free throw line like he's normal? Then his shot is also not going in? Absolutely, Amy. And it's frustrating because as a player, you know what you you know what you can always go to, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're not getting to the free throw line as much, your shot's not falling, and then your big fella fell out. It's kind of like, man, I, I need to get it going. So it gets frustrating. Yeah, it was compounded, and then you had off nights from George Niang. He couldn't get his rhythm going. D'Anthony Milton did pick up the slack. We saw Tyrese Maxey as well, but it was just one of those nights. And you wonder. I know they're allowed to have those, but sitting where they are at this point in the season. No cause for concern on your part, though, I feel like. No, there's no cause of concern for me. I, I think this team has proven they've really found the, the gas and they're really steaming down the road. With that being said, they had a hiccup this game. Um, I'm a, I'm a, it could be a little fatigue yeah. from coming off that mm -hmm. road and you come back because the first part of the game, the first quarter to me was very telling of the Sixers. A lot of self errors, a lot of, uh, you know, turnovers that are not norm for this team. Right. A lot of self imposed turnovers. Respectfully, respect to Chicago, but Sixers kind of dug themselves a hole early in this game and tried to build back out of it. And also, I think it came back in them overtime games without Joel. Yeah, I mean, they finished with 19 turnovers. They had 12 of them in the first half. And Jim, you know, we know this offense usually runs through Joel Embiid. That's how it's designed. Jimmy Harden runs it. Joel Embiid is really the, the engine that makes it go. When he fouled out, it kind of shifted. Tyrese Maxey started running uh, the offense through him. Is that because Harden was maybe having an off night, or was it just something the matchups that the Bulls presented? No, I think uh, Harden's uh, uh, off night probably was a factor in Maxey uh, asserting himself a, a little bit more there. But I might just like to make mention of the fact you and Mark touched on this that this really is another game on a road trip. I mean, they're back mm -hmm. in town. Boom, play, boom, back out. And you heard Doc speak to this the other night after the win, what, in Indiana, that really this is, yes, it's home. Yes, we're going to have the benefit of the crowd. I'm not in any way under uh, exaggerating that fact. But in terms of the travel, it's the middle of a seven-game road trip mm -hmm. is really what an uh, eight-game. Count this as <laughs> exactly. another, even though you're in Philly. And I think, in a way, the, the play evidenced that. Yeah, they're not really like home, sitting there, oh, yeah, right. I can go home. They're going home, packing up and heading right back out as they go now to uh, Chicago for the second of this home and home series. All right, we're going to take our first time out here on Sixers Post Game Live, proudly brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. We will bring you Dr. J's halftime speech. As they honored 40th anniversary of that 83 championship squad. And we're here from Doc Rivers coming up. Joel Embiid, he is the subject of our stargazing brought to you by Get Covered, New Jersey. Embiid, 37 points, 16 rebounds. He fouled out in the second overtime. I mean, what can't he do? We know that. But that streak of 10 straight or 30 or more points, that is remarkable. He's going back to Shaq days, Jim. Yeah, well, it's uh, no surprise, Amy. You've been watching it night in and night out. Uh, the guy has just been uh, playing incredible level basketball. Doing it from all over and really 
Uh, it doesn't matter who the opposition is, whether it's among the, the top teams in the league or the bottom feeders. He brings it every night. I'm sure he would have uh, taken the win uh, to go with those 10 straight. Let's check in with Doc Rivers now. Uh, us. Yeah, I, I thought our execution all night was was awful, awful. Um, first half, I didn't think we trust the, the pass. We've been passing the ball so well. We showed a video today of all passes. Uh, there were so many plays where guys driving in the middle just, you know, flow pass. It was there all night. Um, and we were trying to get in the paint and make plays, and they were just digging stuff out. So uh, we did it a little bit better in the second half, I thought. I thought the ball moved a little bit better, but never found our rhythm the entire game. Ball stuck all night, um, late in the clock the entire night. Um, so that was disappointing. And then our execution down the stretch was awful, too. What do you think they did to Bob and James? Uh, just put ball pressure, you know. Doc, with the, the execution issues that you're talking about there, I guess yeah. you decide with the, the, the final play and regulation to let them run Yeah, down. because I thought I, I wanted Tyrese had the ball, and then Joel, I wanted them to win it. And then when we swung it, it was, you know, I just thought, let's go with it. So, you know, you have a gut. Sometimes you win with it, sometimes you don't. Did you like the shot Tyrese got on that play? Uh, no, I didn't like any of our shots really, except for the ones we drew up out of the timeouts. Um, you know, we didn't get a lot of good anything tonight. On the Joel uh, six foul, what did you see there? It was a foul. Yeah. So, so was that why you didn't challenge it, or, or yeah, it was a foul. Like you don't waste the timeout if it's a sure foul. I mean, don't waste your timeout. So. The play where Anthony uh, fouled, did you just not understand what you wanted him to do there? Yeah, yeah, that was miscommunication again. You know, we were saying no left, no left all night to Levine, though Levine went left a lot. Um, and then Anthony thought that was foul to give. So uh, that's on both of us. How much do you think the nature of your schedule caught up to you guys tonight? Yeah, you know, it did a little bit, but I still thought we could have won the game. Like, there's no excuses, you know, uh, especially for execution. You know, uh, you can be flat, you can miss shots. Um, you know, I thought defensively we hung in there. I thought we were really good defensively overall. Had some, you know, you know, some um, miscommunications, which you do all game. So I'll, I'll take our defense that we played all night. I just I can't live with the way we played offense. So we, we, we have to fix that. Um, and that's every night. Like, you just got to be good on both ends. And I thought the balance of the game, we were good on one end, and that was the defensive end. You mentioned the pass. In their defense, they have been good on both ends during this eight-game win streak. Unfortunately, offensively, you heard Doc say it. Listen, we didn't. I didn't like a lot of our shots. Did you like the shot Maxie got? I didn't like any of the shots we got unless they were drawn up out of a timeout because they did seem a little bit out of sorts, Mark. They did. I mean, it, it just they seemed like they were trying to find their footing. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you get sea legs sometimes. That's how it seemed to me. It seemed like they couldn't get into a rhythm. Respectfully to Chicago Bulls, I'm not taking nothing from them. But Sixers kind of find answers. And I think it, when, when Milton... Percy went on that run. I think that kind of ignited them mm -hmm. and started to run. Yeah, Jim, I mean, out of the timeouts, Doc would see that his team seems a little bit discombobulated. He'd call a timeout. They'd run a set, run a play. It'd be successful. And then the wheels would kind of start to kind of be a little bit shaky after that. Yeah, uh, he did uh, make mention of the fact that out of the timeout, they did execute. But in this league game, uh, it's almost uh, most teams, they just kind of play out of the flow. It's not like you're calling a play as a coach from the bench and that's why Doc is what he was saying you know it just wasn't there the ball was sticking we just didn't have our normal like pace flow rhythm there's a lot of different words mm -hmm. that you can use if you just look up at the scoreboard balls weren't going in the basket at the normal rate because the way the offense was yielding shots it just wasn't a normal performance and Doc did I thought he drew a very good distinction he liked the defense the defense more than acceptable but unfortunately, they lost this game at the offensive end of the court. Absolutely. Uh, it is uh, important to note Joel Embiid had been undefeated 12-0 against the Bulls. <laughs> wow. Well, he's now 12-1. But listen, he has a chance to get back on track coming up on Wednesday. Uh, we are going to hear from Dr. J as soon as we're done with this timeout. So make sure you stick with us here. Sixers Post Game Live is brought to you by Cure Auto Insurance. Sixers honoring the 83 championship team. You see Bobby Jones there. Of course, Dr. J looking very dapper. The man we had in our studios pregame, Maurice Cheeks, point guard of that 83 team. Dr. J addressing the media. See all the 
Ikukis, John Nash, among other guys. Here is uh, Dr. J addressing the crowd. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Philadelphia. It is such an honor to uh, stand here and represent this group of people who have been so instrumental in making the last 40 years of my life very special, especially after we got over the hump, swept the Lakers, and, <laughs> and claimed the 1983 NBA championship. As Mark Ivoroni was playing the music on the bus, what a feeling. So uh, we're here uh, not only to be recognized uh, by you, so many of you weren't even born then, but your parents and your grandparents probably were, and to also challenge, challenge this year's team. to make it happen, because 40 years is way too long. Thank you. God bless you. You guys are fans for life, and uh, we're so happy for your support forever. <laughs>